Hi, Catherine here with Circle Art Designs. Today I am working on project four of the April Bargain Bead Box. This will be an amethyst tree of life pendant necklace and matching earrings. I've been trying to get to this edit all day. We have been having just torrential thunderstorms here and because I work right at a bay window it sounds kind of loud in here whenever it's banging around out there. But it's taking a break in it. I don't know if it's coming back or not, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to go ahead and get started. So, as I turn my eyes to the mat today, I'm reminded to be simply grateful. So, even though it has rained all day long and it has kind of messed up my plans, I know that God doesn't work on my time timetable but his own. So I am grateful for the rain today. We, In the summer I will be praying for rain. But today we've had a lot of rain and I am truly grateful to my father that he does provide rain for us and for the earth and for the creatures of the earth. And that I have this little break I can actually see the wind beginning to pick up a little bit and I'm thinking, well, it's probably blowing back in again. But I am truly grateful for the changes in the weather and that the Lord provides us with what we need when we need it. How about you? What are you grateful for today? Well, my blue mat has gone down and I have put our supplies on there and taken my supply picture. So let's look at what we're going to be using to make this necklace today. So I have long since used the chain that came with the April Bargain bead box many things ago. So today I pulled out my own chain. This is a stainless steel chain. It is on a different roll than it came on because I got tired of messing with the little box it was on. But any chain that you have will work for this necklace. Whatever you like, whatever you have in your stash. And that's up at the top. The chain that I have got, I believe, well, I would have either picked it up at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, or Michael's, and I'm just not sure where I picked this one up. That's why I'm not saying much more about that. All right, to the right, you will see silver beading wire. This is a bulk value buy that I bought off of Amazon. I've been using the two rolls I got uh, for quite a while, and I really love this silver beading wire. On down from that and slightly to the middle, you're going to see 8 millimeter violet mountain jade dyed dolomite. <laughs> Let's try that again. It's 8 millimeter violet mountain jade, which is a dyed dolomite, and that is from the April Bargain Bead Box. Across to the right from that, you're going to see a 48 by 27 millimeter faceted amethyst tree of life pendant, also from the bargain bead box. They say this is a brass pendant and it is in the silver tone. Down from that, we have the last I'm sorry to see them go. I'll have to order some more if they still have them because I really love these. These are your six millimeter leaf bead, the leaf bead caps. And you've seen me use these. I believe I've used some of them in every project we've done. And this is the last. And you'll see a little note on this picture that says, I was too short. So I pulled some star bead caps that were from a previous bargain bead box that I had a few of them left over and I'll use those in the center of the necklace so that everything has a bead cap. Going on towards the left on that bottom you will see some silver wire guards. These are from my own stash. 
and then going to the very far left corner you will see eight millimeter rhinestone rondelle spacers i love these i did pick these up off, Am off of amazon i got a silver and gold and there were lots of them i picked these up two years ago and i am still working with them if we go up from there you will see a lobster claw clasp and an extender for this necklace that is from my own stash oh and the rondelles are all on um, the rhinestone uh Rondell spacers are also from my own stash. I don't know if I said that or not. Okay, and up from that, there's this gorgeous dark purple. They call it dark amethyst, I believe, on the bead list for the, the bargain bead box for April. These are Malaysian jade dyed quartz in the dark amethyst or dark purple and they are gorgeous perfect for that pendant do you see how the two colors match i wish i had had a larger bead that same color but i didn't and this ends up looking beautiful with a combination of the violet and the amethyst and that with some um crimps and the few tools that we need are all that I've pulled for this so far. So, let's get started. So you will see here that I've pulled out the bead along number one, and I'm going to go ahead and cut the wire for my necklace. Now, I'm not sure exactly how long I'm going to make the center of my necklace. So, I cut out a good arm, no, maybe two-thirds of an arm. I know it's too much, but what I have left, I put back on the spool and I'll use it for earrings or I'll use it for a bracelet or something else. It won't go to waste. So, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to open up these number ones. Now, I'll tell you. When I opened them up and I went to put them on and I looked at them, I remembered for some reason the two beads in a number one are smaller, at least the ones I got, than the two be than the round crimp beads in a number one. So I went ahead and pulled up the round in a number two so that I would have what I needed. But I haven't decided that just yet. I have opened up the three millimeter spacer balls that I like to put on the end of anything that I use with the wire guard. And I like that because it gives me a place to hide my wire and I like to give myself just a teeny bit of a tail. Now this is where I am remembering. Oh dear. Is that going to go through there? Yes. Because I pulled out the number two. Two beads. So I don't know if I showed that. But I did put up the number ones and I went ahead and pulled out the number twos. You know, you may have some and it may be perfect. But for me, for some reason, those number ones never work. If it's a tube bead, works fine if it's a round, but wrong if it's a tube. So this tube crimp and it goes just like that. Make sure if you noticed, I was making sure that my wires are straight. If you let them cross in that tube, they will not catch. Put it in the back of your crimper now. That's what I'm showing you here. And then crimp all up and down that tube bead. And you should get this beautiful little M shape. And it should look just like that. I'm making sure my wires are separated and they really did catch on both sides. Then I'm going to do a half a turn, put it in the front of the crimper, and then crimp up and down that bead again so that it makes truly a beautiful little tube. Now at this point, if you wanted to, you could put on bead covers, crimp covers, but I don't. I use the three millimeter 
to um, spacer ball right there and that's all I do for my endings uh, if you if you're very careful it won't scratch up your crimp and you should be able to use it just as it is but you know it's a personal preference I personally just like the crimp showing all right so once I've done that and I've got the the piece cut off and you notice that I turned it to the far side to cut it so that I didn't take a uh, chance on cutting the main wire. I'm putting on the dark amethyst faceted rondelle. Then I'm putting on the leaf cap, bead cap. And then I'm putting on this violet mountain jade. Isn't that pretty? And then uh, I was going to do that, but I went, okay, mm is that really what I want to do? No, I think I'm going to really use these beautiful um, rhinestone spacers. And then a, another mountain jade, and then the bead cap. So, and, the, oh, I'm sorry, and then another one of the purple or the amethysts. So let me see if I can get you a picture of what I'm doing. So after cutting off your wire, just a recap, we're putting on a wire guard, a number two crimp tube, a three millimeter spacer ball, then that three by four millimeter Malaysian jade purple rondelle, then a six millimeter leaf bead cap, and then one of the eight millimeter violet mountain jade beads, a rondelle, I'm sorry, a rhinestone rondelle spacer. I believe these are also eight millimeter. They could be six, but I think they're eight. And then from that, we're going again with a violet mountain jade, then that leaf bead cap will be the end of that component. So from the three by four Malaysian Jade Purple Rondelle to the second Violet Mountain Jade and the corresponding bead cap on the end, that is the completed component. Then we will repeat this three more times, starting with the three by four Malaysian Jade Purple Rondelle. Ooh, I left off an E. Look at that. Okay, here we go. Actually, before we continue on, would you take a moment to like this video? And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, and if you would hit the notification bell, you will get notified when I put on new content. Also, if you would leave a comment and share this video, that would be so appreciated. Thank you so much. All right, carrying on. So as we have finished that component and we have put on our mountain, I'm sorry, our Malaysian Jade Rondelle, we're putting on another beat cap, the mountain jade in that violet, a rhinestone rondelle, another mountain jade, a bead cap, and then the rondelle. And so that's what it looks like. Now I'm going to do a total of four of these. And when I get to the middle of this necklace, I will join you again. So I'm putting on the last of those rondelles, and this will be my fourth one. Now you can make this as long or as short as you want. If you want more chain than beads, shorten the amount you have. I just took the bead caps that I had, and I divided them for both sides of the uh, necklace. So I'm making sure I have four for each side. But with the Tree of Life pendant, if I just put on those uh, rhinestones that it, it would not go through. So I am adding, I showed you one of the stars. Um, I think that was back at Christmas, but I'm not sure. It could have been in January. I'm adding that 
and then I'm adding another of the violet beads. And now I have pulled out these one millimeter crystal bicones. You can use seed beads for this. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm about to put on my pendant. And I don't want the naked wire exposed because the pendant rubbing up and down on that wire will fray it over time. So I always add a bead that will go through the bell for my pendant. Now then, I put on three of those because they're the little crystal bicones, and I got those at Hobby Lobby probably back last summer. It could have been the summer before, but I think it was last summer. Uh, so I put three of those on. Then I'm putting on another Mountain Jade and one of those bead caps that I had in my stash and the Ron Dale. Now then, the reason I put that mountain on each side is one of the, I wanted a stopper. I needed something big enough to keep the bell from jumping over whatever was going to be there. So, cause I like my bell to stay in place. So with three of those little bicones and the violet um, beads on either side, it makes a perfect stopper. Then I'm going to carry on till I get to the top. I'll see you in a moment. I decided I was cutting off too fast. What I meant was I'm going to carry on up with the same component. So I ended with that rondelle. So I will put a leaf spacer because I have some. And then I'm going to put on the vi the violet eight millimeter bead, the rondelle, the eight millimeter bead, the leaf, and here it is all the way up. Okay, isn't that pretty? So now it is time for me to get ready and finish this necklace out, at least the center part of this necklace. So I'm going to go ahead and put on a three millimeter spacer ball. Then I'm going to put on the number two crimp uh, tube, and now I'm putting on my wire guard. Wire guards are U-shaped. You put it in one tube, you go around the top of that U or an N, depending on how you're looking at it, then through the tube on the other side, and I had too much wire to pull down, and I did not want to take a chance of um, ruining that wire guard because they are thin so I'm pulling the loop and making it smaller that way. Remember I'm not wasting this wire it will go for another project. Once I've got it on there I am going to get it through the crimp and through the little spacer ball and sometimes this can be a little tricky because before you had nothing on and it's easy to get it on there or easier but it's a little hard whenever you're getting it through the crimp through the spacer ball and there's really not much room there now at first I thought I might put it through the rondelle but it was just more than my fingers could do so I'm flipping it over and I'm going to try it again this way see if my bifocals will bifocal and I can see that hole. All right. Have you noticed the storm has not picked up? I actually see a less gray sky out my window. That's amazing. All right. My bird bath is overflowing. You just, the birds will have plenty of water tomorrow. All right, I have just fiddled with that thing and fiddled with that thing trying to get it through there, but it looks like I've got it now. I actually had to give myself more space so that I could get it through it, and I did. So now I'm going to take my straight nose pliers and make sure I can tighten it up. And let's see, did I get that out of the way? Nope, I still am trying to get it through that ball. I mean, through the rondelle. Mm, I don't remember if I could or not. I'm so sorry. This was two days ago that I was filming. Look at there. I got it. Well, I kind of got it. All right. Now then, my straight nose pliers, my chain nose, and I pull it down that way. And that way, I don't um, 
torque the wire and I don't take a chance of ruining my wire guard or my fingers. And did you see that I bent it first? I wanted to make sure that there was still play in that brace, in that necklace. Now I'm putting it in the back of the crimper. And I'm mashing all up and down the tube, making sure there was wires going on both. Then I'm doing a half turn and crimping with the top of the crimper. And then I give it a tug. Now I'm going to move this over to the side. I'm going to cut right underneath there so that the wire is hid. Look at that. I made it all the way to the bead cap. <laughs> now that is amazing. And there you go. The center of this piece is done. Now isn't that lovely? I think that's just gorgeous. Now this is the chain I had pulled. I am doing a 24 inch necklace. So I have pulled eight inches for each side of the necklace. I open up my jump ring. I hold the jump ring between two chain those pliers and just like I'm twisting it closed with only one side, I twist it open with only one side. And I'm filling the top to make sure there's no rough edges. And this was a little secret and I've told you before, but you know it took me years before I realized it. If you touch it with your finger and it's rough, it's not closed. All right, again, between two chain those pliers, twist one wrist, it opens it up. You don't have to twist it a lot, just a little, enough to get your chain on. And like I said, I usually try to be consistent so that when it matters, I have built in the habit of consistency, unless I get in a hurry and then it's Katie bar the door. All right, there you go. And I'm twisting it close again. And now, mm, yeah, it's not closed yet. We'll give it another little try because sometimes when you buy these uh, jump rings, they're slightly whopper gaggled. And it's really hard to braise them up so that the ends butt right up against each other. But here you go. The chain is on. I'm going to go ahead and open this jump ring right here. I'm going to put on my chain. If I quit playing with it. There you go. And I am using oval jump rings for this because I just think they're more secure. That's my own personal opinion. I put on my lobster claw. Then I'm going to open this oval jump ring again. When you use ovals, the slit is on the side as opposed to the top or the bottom. And so it just pulls differently with use. I found that out from a wonderful na lady named Randy from Thunder Horse Descendants. And she is on YouTube. You should look her up. Okay, she does some wonderful things and she has a bead sale every Monday morning. Mm, I think nine o'clock central time. And there is that necklace. If it would get into camera, it would be wonderful. Hey, look at that. My pen is the same color. I had just noticed that. But you know what? That necklace looks awful bare right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bead charm. I'm going to use some of the rondelles, the spacers, and that beautiful violet bead. I'm putting on a spacer, the purple rondelle, the violet bead, a purple rondelle, and a spacer. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out my looper to do this. You can make your own loops. And if you are better at making your own loops than I am, I say go for it. But you know what? This is so easy. And I've been using it for years in different sizes. Now see how straight that is? Take your finger and push it just slightly back so that it's at an angle. When you do that and you take it off that looper, you should have a beautiful little question mark. Now you're going to close that question mark up. I hope I get it in camera. I'm excited. I've almost got the necklace done. Just like that, once you close it up, as long as you don't distort your question mark, your loop should be right over the center of your component. And you want your loops to be over the center. Even when I do the turn down loops, I try to gently move them 
coerce them to the center so they'll hang correctly. Now on this extender chain, it has a little opening just like a jump ring. I'm going to take two chain nose pliers. I'm going to gently open it. Not very much, just a little because I have to get this back together. I'm going to put on my bead charm and I'm going to close that up. Now sometimes you can't do this because it has been soldered together, but on this one you could and it's easy and look at that. You'll look as beautiful going from the back as you do from the front. And here is that completed necklace and you're about to see I made a mess of it. I don't know what I did. I have to straighten it back out so I can show it to you. I got the, uh, the chain all messed up. But isn't that pretty? I just love it. It is gorgeous. And look at the amethyst on the bottom of that pendant. All right, now we're on to our earrings to match. And just a side note, the sister store to the Bargain Bead Box, Bead Box Borg, Bead Box Bargain, has some of these amethyst pendants still in the shop because I went and ordered me one today. That way I can put this piece in the shop, and I will. I'll put it online. But when that comes in, I'm making one of these for myself because I think it's gorgeous. And I'm also going to do that with the rose, but you haven't seen that one yet. Okay, here we go. Now for the earrings. For this earring set, we're going to use exactly what we used in the uh, necklace, except at the very bottom, you will see an 18 by 14 millimeter rhinestone tree of life charm. I'm making a two-step dangle. And this charm is going to be the bottom of the two-step dangle. Now, at the top, I have pulled from my own stash some silver lever back ear wires. Going across from there, you will see those three millimeter silver spacer balls from my own stash and up above that some jump rings that we will be needing. It's just a moment. I have to cough. Sorry about that. Whatever blew in with the rain has made my throat and lungs and nose very unhappy. Sorry about that. Okay, where was I? Oh yes, I'm using the oval jump rings. Now from the oval jump rings, I want you to pass the three millimeter spacer balls and right in the middle, you are going to see that eight millimeter violet mountain jade, which is the dyed dolomite. Mite? Dolomite. I'm sorry that what I'm looking at is kind of small. And then going to the right, you will see the four by three or three by four, whichever way you want to say it, millimeter dark purple in the Malaysian jade, which is a dyed quartz. And that's also from the April Bargain Bee box. And then Going up, I kind of skipped it, go over the charms, you will see two of the eye pins. If you want to make your own eye pins, it's very simple to make. You can cut your wire. You need to use at least a 20 gauge wire for earrings, 18 to 20 gauge. And if you have a looper, you can make a loop on one end and you have an eye pin ready to go. These eye pins are two inches in length. Two to two and a half inches is perfect depending on how much stuff you're going to put on your first component. Now, the component for this will be exactly what we did before. And I'll show, or almost exactly what we did before. So let me show you. So we're going to take our eye pin and make sure that the end is closed. Remember, just because it came out of a sack doesn't mean the end is closed. Put on your three millimeter. Put on one of your purple rondelles, your violent eight millimeter, two of your purple rondelles, and then a 
uh, three millimeter spicer ball. And that's going to be the first component. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put on the other. Again, it's the spacer ball, the rondelle, the eight millimeter, two of your spacer balls. And the reason I am doing this one backwards is I wanna look at it side by side. When you're designing jewelry, especially when you're doing two-step jewelry on these swings, you want to decide, does it make a triangle or does it make an upside down triangle? I like the triangle. I always like to go from smallest to largest. So that's what I'm gonna do on both of these. I take my looper, make sure it's straight up, then slightly to the side. I have that question mark, and then I am going to close my question mark if my hands quit shaking enough for me to close my question mark. Now remember when I told you you don't wanna distort your question mark? Well, that's what happened here because my hands are shaking. And so what I did once I get this close was I took my pliers and slightly turned it back so that that loop would stay right over the center. It wasn't a great distortion, but it was a distortion enough that it would have caused the component to hang strange. So again, I'm taking, after I use my looper, I'm taking, closing that loop, making sure it's closed and it's sitting right over the top. Then I'm taking my, actually those are my curved nose pliers. I'm sorry you can't see what I'm doing because I'm right at the bottom of the picture. <laughs> and making sure it's closed and that is right over the top. Now these charms are not in the same on the end, so it's gonna matter how they hang. I'm taking two chain nose or a chain nose and a curve. I'm holding the ends of my eye pin and making sure that they are sitting in the same plane. Even a fraction of a millimeter will change how that second dangle on a two-step dangle hangs off that first one. Once you've got them exactly in the same plane, open up your chump ring, put on your charm and your component, and it will be ready for your ear wire. Look at there. Open it up, just like we've done all the others, with the twist of one wrist holding the other wrist steady. Put on your charm, your component, and your two-step dangle should be ready. Now, with the lever backs, I don't have a choice as to what's going to hang in the front. And normally I use lever backs on something where it doesn't matter. If you are using fish wire hooks, then you can turn your loop to make it hang however you want it to hang. But these should, if I have got my components correct, this should hang facing the front because I'm using a jump ring to join them. And let's see. Yep, there you go. So there's one, and then we're gonna put the other one together, and these earrings will be finished. had such a great time and look at that the thunder clouds have not come back you haven't had to listen to it thunder and lightning while I've been doing this and I I just love this set but like I said I went on today and I got me at one for myself because these are amazing look at those earrings I'm going to add pictures so as I'm finishing this up Thank you again for joining me today. I have had so much fun. I hope you've had fun too. I hope that you've had some laughs and you've learned some things. And I hope that this has brought joy to your heart. May God bless you and may he keep you safe. And I will see you next week. Oh, and this is up in the shop at circleartdesigns.net. God bless y'all. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Catherine, circleartdesigns.net. Bye now.